So, we've installed the Tale of Two Wastelands and we now have the Fallout 3 experience in Fallout New Vegas. But, if we were to nitpick, and ladies and gentlemen, we are going to nitpick in this video, we've not got everything. We're still missing a few details and so that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to finish the job, we're going to complete the Fallout 3-ification of Tale of Two Wastelands. This video is for people who have already installed Tale of Two Wastelands and its required mods. I will also be assuming you did this with the help of a mod manager. I will be using Vortex in this video and you have a reasonable understanding of the modding process for Fallout New Vegas. If none of that is true, I do have videos that can help you out. Please find links down below in the description. In this video, I'm going to show you four mods that make your Tale of Two Wastelands feel a little more like the original Fallout 3. And it does this by bringing over some of the things that were not strictly speaking needed to make Tale of Two Wastelands work, but that you might like. For example, the player voice. Now, obviously, Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas did not have a voiced protagonist in that none of the dialogue was voiced, but the character does make some sounds when he does things like taking fall damage, or hitting things with a bat. There's also the movement animations, and this includes things like walking and running, but not things like aiming down the weapon, shooting, etc. Now, the differences are quite small, but some people are going to notice this sort of thing far more than I would. I mean, I play first person normally anyway, so this one's going to come down to personal choice. I can tell you that the lead dev for Tale of Two Wastelands prefers the Fallout 3 animations, but I know some people are going to prefer to look a bit more like the courier. It's going to be the same with the player voice, though. Do you want to sound and walk like the kid from Vault 101, or do you want to sound and walk like the courier? Now, the user interfaces for Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas were very similar, but there are a few small differences. For example, in New Vegas, on the heads-up display, the bracket that is above the weapon condition and the compass has a little curve in the corner, where the Fallout 3 one had a completely straight bracket. Very small difference. Now, the Darnified UI has straight brackets as well, so it's more consistent with the Fallout 3 experience anyway. There is also the loading wheel. Fallout New Vegas has that uh, roulette wheel, and Fallout 3 has this more standard, very simple, almost compass-like wheel. And lastly, the user interface sounds. Now again, not many differences there. The one that really jumps out at you, though, is the sound when you get experience. When you get the little experience notification on the heads-up display, and you get the sound. In New Vegas, you get that sort of rumble. But in Fallout 3, you get the ka -ching. Yeah, it's a minor difference, but I kind of missed that cha -ching. But then, all of the mods in this video are about minor differences. It's about making the Tale of Two Wastelands feel a little more like the original Fallout 3. And you have to decide if you want that, and if you do, which aspects do you want? Maybe you just want the user interface sounds and the, the wheel, the loading wheel, but you don't mind the New Vegas voice. Or perhaps you hate the New Vegas voice and you want to just replace that. That's going to be completely up to you. There are four mods. You pick the ones you want. Now, to install these mods, you're going to need the installer that you use to install Tale of Two Wastelands itself. I still have mine on my desktop here, 
However, if you've deleted yours, and there's a good chance you have, you'll need to re-download it from the Tale of Two Wastelands installation guide by going over to the TTW tab on its page, visiting the download page, and downloading the archive once again, and then extracting that archive to a folder. You're also going to need Fallout 3 to be installed. So if you uninstalled it after fixing up Tale of Two Wastelands because you thought you didn't need it, my apologies, but I'm afraid you're going to have to reinstall Fallout 3. Once you've made sure you have the installer downloaded and ready to go, you will need to go along to this page, and I will leave a link to this and the TTW installation guide in the description down below. You go along to this page and you will need to download four files that are listed here, starting with UI sounds. And I'm going to right click and open in new tab. There will be no preview for this file, just a download button. Hit download and download it to wherever you normally download. Mine downloads to my desktop. You then do the same for the other three files. And once you have all four files, all you need to do is copy or move the four files into the installer folder. Now we run TTW install by double clicking it as usual. And this time we will get this pop-up asking us which package we wish to install. We've already installed the full build. We now need to install these four packages. And I'm going to start with F3 interface, and I'm just going to double click there. This will take me to the same installer. Once again, I will need to add the path to my new Vegas. Sometimes it will actually find it for you. Mine is in Steam, Steam Apps, Common, and Fallout New Vegas. And then we will need to decide where we're going to install this optional patch. Now, when I showed you how to install the main Tale of Two Wastelands mod, I gave you two options. One of them was a fast option where we installed the mod directly into the staging folder for Vortex. This halved the amount of time required and it halved the amount of hard disk space you needed. But these patches are actually going to create very small mods in comparison, so there's no real point in doing that. So I'm going to install or create the mods somewhere else and then drag them into Vortex, the super safe method. And so all I need to really do is create a folder somewhere and I'm gonna create one on my desktop here. I'm gonna minimize this for now. I'm gonna create one on my desktop here and I'm going to call it Tale of Two Waste. I need to remember how to spell Wastelands dash and it was Fallout 3 interface. You, you can make it a little smaller if you wish. Um, that's perfectly fine. And then I'm going to open this up. I'm going to click here and copy address as text. And then just paste that in to there. And then hit install. It won't take long. It's already done. Then once again, I open up the installer folder. I run it once more. This time I'm going to choose Fallout 3 Movement Animations, double click there, and yet again fill in the location for Fallout New Vegas and create a new folder where I'm going to put this patch. There we go, Tale of Two Wastelands Fallout 3 Movement Animations this time. Again, I'm going to open it, right click, copy, address as text, paste it into here and then hit install. And just keep doing this for, for the rest of the patches. Once the last one is done, you can close the installer folder. You should have four new folders for the four new mods. Again, open up Vortex, switch to mods on the left-hand side, and then simply take one of the folders you've just created. I'm gonna start with the Fallout 3 interface and left-click and drag to where it says drop files, then hit install. Now, the files in these mods may conflict with some other mods you've installed, 
but bear in mind these are vanilla assets for Fallout 3. So the chances are most of the mods you are going to install on top of it will need to load after them. As a general rule of thumb, that is probably true. So for example, these interface files conflict with the Darnified UI. I definitely want the Darnified UI to win that conflict. So I'm going to want it to, where is it? There we go. Tale of Two Wastelands, Fallout 3 interface, one conflicting file, the interface shared.dds. The only difference I can see when looking at the files themselves is the cursor. And seeing as I'm using a mod that I covered in the last video that makes the cursor consistent across the entire user interface, I don't actually think it's going to matter too much. Then you repeat the process for the other three mods. So I'm going to take the movement animations one, drag it to drop files, let it get imported, hit install and see if there are any conflicts. In this case, there are none. Do the same for the player voice. And finally, the UI sounds. Install. No conflicts. And that's it. Finished installing the mods. Now just start the game up and see if they work. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is it for this video. Now I know I've been focusing on very small things, little details that don't change much, but I'm already working on more videos covering mods that will have a far greater impact on your game. Mods that change the gameplay, quality of life mods, visual mods, that sort of thing. You are more than welcome to join me on any or all of those videos if you care to do so, and I look forward to seeing you there if you do. However, until then, remember, as always, have fun. And that one